So in today's video, we're going to be talking about how gallstones are formed and the chemical processes behind the formation. Whenever we eat fatty foods such as burgers or fries or hot dogs, our body has to break them down and uh, absorb them. However, fatty foods such as the ones I mentioned are a little bit harder to break down and absorb compared to other types of foods. Here's where the gallbladder comes in. Our gallbladder stores bile. And this bile is made up of different organic molecules which ultimately help break down the fatty foods that we eat in order for our body to absorb them more easily. But what exactly is bile and what is it made out of? Well, first of all, it's made out of water and electrolytes. However, as I mentioned before, there are organic molecules such as cholesterol, bile salts and acids, bilirubin, and phospholipids. Cholesterol, also known as C27H46O, that being its chemical formula, is one of the most important organic molecules found in bile. However, normally cholesterol is insoluble in bile. This is where bile salts and bile acids come in. Here we have cholic acid, which is an example of a bile acid that can be found in bile, and glycocholate, which is a bile salt that can be found in bile. And these two help cholesterol become soluble in bile. Interesting to note though, bile salts and bile acids usually are synthesized from cholesterol. Now that we've familiarized ourselves with bile and the organic molecules that make up bile, we can talk about gallstones. Gallstones are essentially hard particles that usually develop in the gallbladder where bile is stored. And there are two types, cholesterol stones, which are usually yellowish in color, and bilirubin stones, which are pigmented and either come in black or brownish colors. However, cholesterol is the more common type of stone that people experience, so we'll be talking about those in more detail. So cholesterol stones can form in three different ways. One way being which there's too much cholesterol, so it's a super saturation of cholesterol in solution. There is not enough bile salts or acids to help the cholesterol stay soluble in the solution or gallbladder stasis, which is just an inactivity of the gallbladder. Whether there is too much cholesterol in the bile or too little bile salts or acids being synthesized in the bile, it eventually leads to the cholesterol precipitating out as it cannot stay in solution without enough bile salts or bile acids. And the precipitation eventually leads to gallstones being formed. When we look at this process of gallstone formation in further detail and think about cholesterol, bile salts, and bile acids all in solution, we can see that the formation of gallstones is just Le Chatier's principle in effect. So just a quick refresh on the principle, whenever a system in equilibrium experiences a stress, the system then shifts equilibrium in order to compensate for this introduced stress. So for our first case, we'll be discussing when cholesterol concentration increases in bile. Our reactants are cholesterol, which is normally insoluble in water, and glycocholate, which helps cholesterol become soluble in water. Bile, of course, consists of more than just cholesterol and bile salts, but we're just simplifying here for the sake of practicality. 
And so basically when cholesterol increases, equilibrium shifts to the left to compensate for the increase of product. And this leads to more production of solid cholesterol. Basically cholesterol precipitates out and forms gallstones. Our second case is when glycocholate concentrations decrease, and this would cause equilibrium to again shift to the left towards the reactants in order to compensate. And this causes more cholesterol to be formed, and that cholesterol can precipitate out. So that's basically how gallstones are formed. And as you can see, it relates back to what we've been learning in class about equilibrium systems and the Chate's principle. Hopefully you learned something interesting. Thank you for watching.